Um, a lot of the install was two minute. And we still we still have normal practice, so we had a lot of third down work. We had quite a bit of run period work, nickel run and base run, and then finished practice um, in the in the two minute situations. Which look, every game ends. You, you guys see it. Every half ends with someone in a two minute drill, and most of the games end in a two minute drill. And and so there's so many situations today. We just did. We're at the end of the half, so. You know, when you do end of game, usually they want to hear need three, need seven, or, you know, there's, there's a goal in mind. End of half, not so much so. You know, you're thinking field goal initially, and then maybe if you get down there a little earlier, you might get aggressive. But um, so we have a lot of work to do still there. Um, any questions? You mentioned you had a lot of work to do there, but it seemed like both of those ended with field goals. Yeah, yeah, I was. Look, the things that we had three penalties in the first wave. We're off the field defensively, but we have a neutral zone infraction, which all of a sudden extend. Not only does it extend it, it stops the clock too. And so that's a three-point penalty essentially. And then, um, but then we're in field goal range. We get an offensive foul that takes us out of field. So a lot of stuff for us to coach on relative to that situation. When you start putting those in, like the first time out today, you're in it. Is that I imagine it always was this year? Yeah, there's a number of things, and it's it's there's 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 over 200 scenarios. But when the drive begins with a minute 48 and two timeouts, it's fairly neutral. In other words, now if I said it's the end of the game and there's 38 seconds, they need a touchdown advantage defense. So it's understanding who's at stress. End of half, the first day, second quarter, minute 48, two timeouts. It's kind of neutral. Um, we can get off the field defensively and right away flip the script and we're in two minute. You know, we can be three and out and we're in two minute. Um, so it's it's understanding the situation and, and we've got a litany more. I mean, tomorrow we'll finish and there'll be different scenarios. It'll be end of game, need three. Um, and it's just understanding when to be aggressive, when we're when we're in the advantage position, or maybe when we're not. But um, today was was fairly it was it was more of the mechanics, and uh, and so it's good film for us. That's a good thing. That's a quarterback position. What have you learned over the years about what makes a good two minute quarterback? Uh, I think they're fast processors. Um, I do think, again, the pocket gets muddy. That they don't get stuck with sacks. Um, they understand how to manage the clock. Throwing the ball away is fine. It stops the clock, and we get to the next play. In a two-minute drill, the average amount of times that you actually go to the line of scrimmage and call another play without a huddle is just a little over two times. So oftentimes in a hurry-up drill, most of the time, the clock has stopped, and you're back in the huddle. Someone got out of bounds or it's incomplete. And then periodically you're right on the ball. So, you know, today we're on the ball a lot just to get them comfortable with that. But someone that, you know, has got good presence and, and, and is able to, you know, really manage the clock, understand what I'm thinking. I can always control the timeout. It's, I'm right with the officials. But uh, the real, real... I mean, look, there's been, our league's seen a number of great quarterbacks, and we've always debated it. But those guys at some point will call the two-minute, and then occasionally you can beep in and say, heads up for a shot here. Or, you know, you're kind of the co-pilot, if you will. Um, and so, you know, early on with these guys, we're, going, we're in their ear, and we're giving them the play, and, and, uh, and that's something I think you build that as you get more more comfortable with it. Earlier on in practice, there were a couple of times where you came up to the line and you guys as coaches kind of called them back. Kind of what were you just, to just, you know, really wanted to, to harp on all the details today. You know, we, we even as a staff, just met with them and I said, you know, I want to, I'm not going to use the word, but I want to be on there about everything. <laughs> you know, today was that like stone in the shoe day coaching and 
it's part of the discipline of playing, you know, and, and for to find the right 53, it's not just physically the talent, it's the mental toughness, the fortitude, all those other things. Can you be challenged? Can you be coached hard? How do you react? Um, that was part of today. You had a couple guys uh, out today, Zach Allen. None significant. Yeah, Zach will be back. He's fine. <clears throat> it was a rest day for him. Keep going. Mr. Nad. Same way. He had a groin tweak. We held him. We think he'll be back tomorrow. But Okay, and then Bowles was on uh, some. Yeah, I, I, they just had a baby. I think I covered it all. Sean, speaking of Zach, I saw him talking to one of the officials for a while. When you have the advantage of officials being out here, do you encourage him? It's perfect, yes, because yeah, they're in our meetings. They're not only in the team meeting, they go to the breakout room meetings. They'll talk about what they're seeing. And and it's important. Look, these guys are trying to do their job. And, and you know, when we met with them prior, so if you see something, throw it and, and communicate it. And so this is, this is the perfect time of the year to, for them to – to talk about what they're seeing. And so um, they've done, this crew has done a great job, and we'll have them again tomorrow, and tomorrow we'll have more of a, a move-the-ball type scrimmage setting. Early in practice, but you can see like there's some staff out work, quarterbacks, et cetera. Is that just about the consistency of it? or um, Was it a drill? Like the, the mic playing back over the speaker? I just don't know if I've seen The what? The cadence. The mic'd up, but the cadence. Yeah, I don't know that that was intentional. You're saying our cadence was coming over the speaker? Yeah, no, they, two days in a row you've got a speaker down here and With the you line. it back. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Wait. So, yeah, in, in, yeah, good question. Um, typically, when the new players come in, there's this standard cadence. And so for 16 years, whoever's playing quarterback, you know, let's try to resemble how it sounds with Breeze. And so we're trying to um, create that same beat with three different, um, three different players. And, and so we're making a big point of it. It becomes difficult for the offensive line if the one beat is a little slower or the one beat's a little faster. And so it's not a rhythmic cadence in yet there's a flow to it, and so how do we make it sound the same? And it's it's easy when hey, your clear cut starter is the X, and hey, let's. And so uh, that's been a point of emphasis. Sean, I, just because I've never had a chance to ask you, in seven on seven, what's your general rule about quarterbacks taking off? Uh, listen, I'm good with it. I, I I want them to practice every rep just like it was a game, and so instinctually, I don't want to force a throw. Now, we get to the start of the season, and we have a scout team, and let's say we're in seven on seven. You know, we might tell the quarterback, hey, get rid of it here. And, but I want them to treat it just like it was a game rep. And so, hey, we flush, it's scramble drill. We keep, you know, receivers turn and find your block, and that happens a lot. So um, it's actually something – we had a meeting on. So we have a scramble drill meeting and then a period. Then we have a red zone scramble drill and a meeting. And then and there, there's so many plays like that in our game now. Um, so in seven on seven, we would treat it the same way. Do you, you grade it like you shouldn't have gone here? Or? Yeah, we, we just grade the decision. And, and you know, it, it, listen, at that moment when someone keeps it, now let's say one in the progression was open. And he didn't see it, and then he flushed, and then he kept it. You know, rewinding it, I might say, hey, what didn't you like? What, what spooked you from, from your first read? Sean, you mentioned the importance of mental toughness. How have you seen Tim Patrick kind of embody that for you guys? He's, listen, he, he's obviously a veteran. Um, I'd say with a lot of grit, you know, with the, what he's overcome. And, um, and yet it's been two years, so... You know, I got on him about something earlier. There was something he did, and I said, look, is the ultrasound affect brain function? Because <laughs> he's had a lot of treatment. I said, is that, are there studies? And he looked at me, he, was, he, was, he wasn't real happy. Um, but he's, he's one of those players that's, that's um, very well respected, and, and you feel his toughness. What did you learn about 
Nate Atkins through his first year, and what, what can his role potentially be? Here's the one thing I would say, and it, um, he's one of those guys, even when he came out of South Carolina, now he didn't, look, you could count on one hand his catches in college. He was a blocking F, you know, not just fullback, but tight end. Um, whatever the assignment is, he, he's one of those guys that when you grade the practice, he ends up in the 90s always. Like, And he, the same thing happens in the kicking game. He gets his guy blocked. And so he understands space and leverage. Um, he's a, a little better receiver than we expected. But he is that F-type player. So, you know, he meets with the tight ends. If one day I said go meet with the fullbacks and the running backs, nothing would change. He's very smart. He's very dependable. Um, and I would say he's really good relative to blocking and blocking in space. And that's why it carries over in, in the kicking game. On kickoffs in the preseason, not just you, but the entire league, how much do you expect to balance wanting to get a look at different things without wanting to show your hand? Yeah, great question. I, I mean, last night was the first exposure. And then, you know, how much are we, you know, um, we have a practice with the Packers. We'll be able to probably visit with them a little bit about it and then decide how much we want to do with it and then make sure that we're the only two teams that see that film. Um, and then the decision as to how much in the preseason would be very much like how much you want to show offensively or defensively. And let's not forget the importance of the preseason. We're still trying to find the right 53 and, and, and select the right players. And so let's give them stuff they know. Um, but 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 we're going to want to cover in return. We're not going to want to you know kick touchbacks. So that will be a. I think the the first. I think the preseason will be important, but the first quarter poll of the season is going to be real important. What have you made of Marvin's camp so far? It's been good. It's been solid. I mean, obviously, uh, he's he's taken a ton of reps with the receivers. Um, he knows what we're doing. He's, he's got good speed and awareness, and, and then obviously we get that additional return uh, role from him. But um, but he's doing well. Audric Estime wasn't uh, doing a lot of team stuff. Is he okay? Right Today now? was a down day for him, just based on the injury. So that list that we told you about that we have at the beginning of the season, it, it's kicking in now. So there's going to be periodically, you know, a guy who's coming off of a, a knee. That's why he missed. It. Today was a scheduled down day. All right, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.